Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create filter delays in Reaper. Now, the idea of a filtered delay is a delay that repeats over and over again, and on each repeat, it gets affected or filtered more and more. So the effect is compounded over and over again, creating a more dynamic or interesting effect, as you'll see. So I have a project in front of me here with a guitar track, and it sounds like this. So let's add the way to this guitar. Let's create a new track right here by double clicking. Let's put a delay effect on that track. Go to the effects. Let's go to the Reaper effects right here and choose Rhea Delay. We're not going to use any dry sound, so let's pull this down and just use the wet. Because the dry sound will be coming from this track. The wet sound or the effect will be coming from this track. Let's adjust it so the delay is a quarter note, which is two eighth notes. Then we're going to send our guitar to this track. Grab the routing and drag and drop it on top of the delay track. See the cursor changes to a patch cable? This lets us know we're creating a send. So let's drop it. Now we're going to send this delay in mono so it doesn't affect panning. Let's bring it down a bit. Let's make it exactly minus 3 dB. Let's see what that sounds like. It's just a basic repeat or delay. Now let's pan it to the left. And let's add another delay to the right speaker. Make a new track. Let's copy that effect that's on this track to this track. And we could do that just by grabbing it and dropping it here. Now that same effect is on this track. Let's pan it to the right. And now we're going to send, not from the guitar, but the first delay to the second delay. So we'll create a send from the routing, drag and drop it. Once again, make it mono and minus three. Let's hear that. Again, it's just a basic delay, but if we add some filtering to each one of these, it's going to compound that filtering or multiply it by each track we create. So let's create a bunch more. Let's do six total. Let's pan them left and right. Let's copy the effect to all of them by drag and dropping them. And let's send each one of these to each other. So from this one to this one, mono minus three, do the same with this one to this one, and so on. Now we should have six repeats in total, going back and forth from left to right. And notice each one gets lower and lower, because each of our sends is reducing the level by 3 dB, making it sound more natural. But we haven't really created a filtered delay. This is just a ping pong delay across multiple tracks. We could have just done this with one plugin, but to make this more interesting, we should filter these delays. So let's clear all the effects on the tracks, except for the first one. Alt on the PC, option on the Mac, and just click them. And let's go to the first one, and let's add a filter after the delay. We could just use an EQ. I'll use re -EQ. Let's remove all the bands except for one. And we'll set this to a high pass filter. We'll roll off the low end right about here. Adjust the bandwidth so it's not peaky like this. And let's add another band. We'll make this a low pass filter. 
Let's bring it up. Make it peaky. Like this. Let's bring it down to about 2 kilohertz. Right here. And that's going to sound like this. Notice it sounds filtery. But it's also a bit louder. So let's bring down the gain or the output about 2 dB. And it sounds like this. Sounds better. Now we can just duplicate the effect to all these tracks. Just drag and drop it. And let's hear the result. Notice that each repeat sounds more intense or more filtered than the previous one. Creating a more interesting effect. Let's try a different filter. Instead of a high pass, let's remove this and let's add a band filter. We'll bring it up to around 3K, right about there. Bring the gain up a bunch and adjust the bandwidth so it's a bit thinner or more narrow. Let's bring this down more so it's not too loud. Let's hear that. Now let's duplicate that effect. Drag this down to each one. And let's hear that. It's still filtered, but it's more filtered in the top end. But instead of using a filter, we can try a few other things. Let's try reducing the bits. Or bit reduction. Let's clear these again. Let's remove the EQ. And let's search bit. And we can see right here a bit reduction plugin. Let's set it to disable this with overload and turn the dither off with truncate. Then we'll reduce the bit depth. Let's make it 8-bit. Let's hear that. Notice how noisy it sounds? Let's duplicate that to the other tracks. Let's hear it. Let's also try an exciter. We'll delete this and all these. Let's add an exciter, which will bring out the top end frequencies. Let's bring up the harmonics a bunch. Let's hear that. Let's duplicate it to all the tracks. Let's hear that. Notice how each repeat gets thinner and thinner. We could also try some distortion. Let's delete this and clear these. Add a distortion. We can choose distortion fuzz. Let's bring this down a bit to plus four. We'll take the dry mix completely off, the channel mode to stereo, and the wet mix down a bit so it's not too loud. Let's duplicate it. Let's hear that. Each one of those repeats gets more and more distorted as each one of them is run through the distortion over and over again, compounding the effect. There's one more I want to show you, but keep in mind you can add whatever plugin that you want. 
So let's remove these. And the last thing I want to try is to create a dynamic filter. So let's add an EQ. We'll use re-EQ again. Let's remove all these bands and just create a low pass. Bring up the peakiness of the filter to about here, something like this. Now we'll add parameter modulation to create a dynamic filter. We'll touch this fader last, go up here to the menu, and turn on parameter modulation. We'll turn on the LFO so it modulates that filter. Let's set this to tempo sync and quarter notes. Bring down the strength so it doesn't move as far. Bring up the baseline so it moves in the right place. And let's hear it. Sounds pretty good. Now we could duplicate this effect, and each one of the repeats will be going through the same dynamic filter over and over again. So it'll sound like this. Notice how warped it sounds. Each one of the repeats is going on top of the previous one, multiplying the effect. And getting a bit warped at the end. Now you're probably thinking, this is a lot of work to set up. But luckily, we only have to do this once. Once it's set up, we can just name the first track. Let's name it Warped Delay and then select all the delays, go to the menu on the track, and save tracks as track template. It automatically saves it into a track templates folder. I'll name it Warp Delays, and you're probably going to want to save all the different ones you create. And then at any point in any project, if you want this effect, let's delete these. All you have to do is right-click over here, insert track from template, and choose our warp delays. It adds them all in, and all you have to do is create a send to the first track, because the other sends are already going to each other. So we can just send from here to here. Let's put it back to minus three and mono. and you're good to go. And you can save as many of these as you want. So that's pretty much it. That's filtered delays in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.